Well, it's still February, and uh, I'm still filming with this nasty old camera, and still using the YouTube editor. So why am I doing this? Well, it seems I ran across a new type of wood stove called a rocket heater, and when I first saw that, I thought, oh man, that's just something some 15-year-old came up with, and he's feeding it horse biscuits and salt peer and, you know, charcoal or something and, and calling it a rocket stove and but it, you know I saw a bunch of videos on it and explanations of how it works and this actually sounds like it might be a good idea and that's not easy to do for me because you know I'm I've been living with wood stoves for like 40 years um, I've been playing with fire since the 70s and uh, you can't sell me anything too easily when it comes to fire unless it actually works now I am seeing however a few problems with some of the things they're calling rocket stoves um, some are rocket stoves some are not but it has to do with metal um, I'm gonna build a rock stove right about here and uh, if it doesn't blow up we may build a house around it um, let me show you see back in you no know, I think it was like 75 76 somewhere in there the first wood stove I actually remember it was one of those old air tights. It uh, was made of thin sheet metal, and we would light the thing, light a fire in there, and you'd turn the lights out, and that thing would be glowing red hot. Literally, you could you could see the stove glow, and it lasted about three years before it got gaping holes in the thing. We couldn't use it safely. So after that, we started building these barrel stoves to heat our house. They last a little longer, but you know they, they suffer the same problem. Well, you can see here, it's uh, rusted out all or burned out all the way around the top edge here of the face, which makes it you know highly unsafe for anything other than burning trash outside. And uh, you know they last a little longer. The metal is thicker. But, uh, yeah, we don't use a barrel stove anymore. We use a cast iron stove. Let me show you something, though, that I pulled out of the cast iron stove about two years ago. Okay, what we have here is a pair of cast iron... Well, it's actually one cast iron plate from one side of the stove. It's in two pieces. Actually, I think there's a third half over here from the other side. Anyway, as you can see, they're not flat anymore. I mean, they had the little angle here going, but these were originally flat, and they're all cracked up. I'd pull them out of the ground and show you to them, show them to you. Uh, you know what? That's what I hadn't planned, but you know they're they're so frozen in the ground right now. It's probably going to be April before I get them out of the ground. So you'll just have to take my word for it that the well it looks like maybe quarter inch cast iron plates warped up and cracked and broke and pieces were falling off and took them out of the stove in two pieces and you know just the cast iron just didn't hold up against the fire and it was just a wood fire but yeah you know they didn't melt down they just warped up and cracked and broke so they weren't useful anymore so I'll, let me go show you the stove itself and show you what I did about it so this is a Marso cast iron wood heater no idea how old it is. My dad, who has played with fire since World War II, put this in the house. And a couple years ago, we tore this thing all the way down to the bottom plate there because we needed to fix those heat those uh, heat plates that you saw a minute ago. Okay. Now, if you look in there. This here is what I made. It's 5 16 inch thick steel, plate steel. I welded up a big old box and cut some holes in here so the air could go through here and through up here a few places. And you know, this was only a couple of years ago. It weighed 90 pounds. It's thick. But you know, if you look, I don't know how hoping this shows. This uh, steel has warps. Even though it's 5 16 inch thick, 
you know, it warps badly. It's it's got a hole here I see now. It's broken out. We got a crack down here. And uh if you look over here on this side, you know it's the same story over here. You know, we got a big old bulge here, we got warpage here, you know, it's this is not thin steel and it's warping just from burning wood. You know, that's just wood fire, not not coal, not oil, just wood. So, what is wrong with a rocket stove made out of entirely out of sheet metal? And, uh, you know, what's wrong with using steel at all in a rocket stove? Well, for that, let's go over to the ThinkPad. Well, here we are with the ThinkBook. These things cost about a buck. They're really good at making you think. And the graphic pixel count on the graphics is really awesome. I made the font myself. You like it? Okay. Rocket stoves. They come in L-tube varieties where you stick the uh, wood in here. The V-tube where gravity helps feed the wood in like this. And then you have the J-tube where you just stick the sticks right straight down in this short tube and the fire comes out there. And they're all insulated so that they get very, very hot inside. What's the point of them? Well, the idea behind them is not to go to the moon, no. They're objective is to make the flu so hot it burns all the gases, the, the wood, the carbon, the wood particulates, the carbon, the hydrogen, the, and the carbon monoxide even. Well that's not easy to do. See, while we're, wood will, will auto ignite at 400 to 500 degrees, the carbon, you have to get it all the way up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit before it burnt, auto ignites completely and you remove all of it. Hydrogen is even harder. It's uh, 1,064 degrees Fahrenheit, it says, according to the MSDS sheets. And then there's carbon monoxide. It has to get all the way up to 1,128 degrees Fahrenheit before it burns. And you can't tell it's there because it's invisible and doesn't smell or anything until it gives you headaches and uh, knocks you out. That means a rocket stove needs to reach 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit or about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Celsius minimum in order to get the job done. So, are these stoves actually achieving that? So, are these little pocket rockets you see on YouTube achieving the 1200 degrees that you need to do get to in order to burn all the flue gases? Well, I see three bits, bits of evidence that they are not achieving that temperature. Number one, these things, if they're reaching 1,200 degrees, you should see them glow in a, uh, full daylight. You know, direct sun shining on them, you should see glowing metal. Um, but you don't. That means they're not reaching 975 degrees. Okay? And I bet if you were, were to be burning them d after dark, and you just throw the coals, hot coals, right into the ground there, and you look down into it in the dark, it, um, it's probably not glowing in the dark, which means you're not reaching 750 degrees Fahrenheit. The other thing I see is they put these pots on there and they get all black all over them. And one guy even mentioned he gave up trying to clean it off because it was so hard to get off and they just kept coming back. Well, that black stuff is carbon. If you're reaching 800 degrees Fahrenheit, you're burning only your carbon, so you wouldn't be getting it all over your pan. And that and uh, there's also the tree sap, okay, tree sap or rosin or organic tar, whatever you want to call it, that boils at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I was not able to find out when it burns, um, but it's made of carbon and hydrogen because it's a sugar compound, uh, sugar, at least mostly sugar. That means it should be certainly burning somewhere in here. But it's not. Uh, he's getting it all. He's probably gluing his carbon to his pan with with tree sap. Okay, that means it's the temperature isn't reaching this point. Now, a lot of people boil water with these as a demonstration. Well, that don't, that happens way down here at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the guy in England, he built this V tube, a nice shiny metal, and he tried uh, 
deep frying uh, french fries or as, as they call them in England I guess uh, chips well deep frying at the maximum is 400 degrees pretty much because you get over 400 degrees with your cooking oil and you run into to, uh, the risk of it catching fire um, well if you're achieving 1200 degrees and, and you're deep frying at 400 degrees or less you should absolutely have no trouble accomplishing that whatsoever this guy had to shorten his chimney because he couldn't get enough heat out of it okay that's a problem I see there that mean that tells me I have doubts I have real doubts he's achieving more than about 600 degrees okay if he's even reaching 600 degrees that is my problem with the pack of rockets good news is they do seem to work just not for the reason they claim um, if you're into solar energy then you know about parabolic mirrors and they how they they're used to focus sunlight or if you're in tele, tele, telecommunications you know about satellite dishes and how they focus the signal so that satellite signals that are broadcast at about 10 watts or so up in space reach the earth and are receivable um, it's all due to focusing the signal um, or if you've lit a fire with a magnifying glass that's another case of focusing the energy you have in hand to accomplish your task those pocket rockets are very good at doing that um, that is I believe the primary reason why they work so well is not because they're actually getting to 1200 degrees no they're just focusing all the heat they do produce on the cook pot which is a, in and of itself a very good reason to use them because anytime you focus your energy like that and saying letting it expand like it does on a campfire um, you're going to use a lot less heat a lot less fuel to accomplish your task now let's turn the page and take a look at what I have about using metal at all uh, in a uh, rocket stove that, that actually does accomplish its minimum temperature okay right here is the 1200 degrees Fahrenheit that we've established as our minimum okay what do I, why can't we make it out of metal I mean steel doesn't melt until up here at 2500 degrees right well if you remember I mentioned a an old airtight wood stove from the 70s I grew up with it well that thing would glow on a regular basis in the dark that meant that means we got that wood stove up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit, 750 degrees. And in some cases, we get that thing so hot, it glowed in the well-lit living room, because we were readers, so we liked our light. That means it was getting upwards of possibly seven, uh, possibly a thousand degrees, maybe. Okay, that's still below our point here. And that airtight burned out inside of three years we had to we had to chuck it. it had bale holes in the sides of it and then there's the cast iron wood stove you just locked, looked at well that has that big heavy thick metal and I got it to glow here the other day that means we're probably achieving a thousand degrees at least because I could see the metal glow in spite of the fire shiny on it uh, and the metal bit up like a potato chip. It's warped up, cracked up, broken like a potato chip. Okay, that's just at a thousand degrees or so. If you're heating your stove at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter, and you're using a, uh, the steel chimney liners as a, as a portion of your wood stove that you can't do without, you have a problem developing, and it's only going to take a couple years to to have the problem manifest if you're achieving the temperatures you need to. Now another guy asked me, okay, what about stainless steel? Well, what is stainless steel? It's expensive, I know that. 
Well, stainless steel is steel, of course, but it also has chrome in it, between 4 and 25 percent chrome. That's your basic stainless steel. Chrome has a temp melting temperature all the way up here at 338 Fahrenheit. Um, when you mix the two metals together, depending on your ratio, um, the temperature melting point of stainless goes up and it's uh, corrosion resistant, acid resistant, all sorts of things like that. Sounds great, but does it actually work in, pro in uh, practice? Well, I had a pretty good idea about that, but I figured I'd contact my brother, Keeper of the Mountain. He's, he grew up with a wood stove like I did, and he also spent 32 years, he has spent 32 years in the heating and cooling industry as repair tech and installer and all sorts of things. And uh, he's seen a few things. Like uh, in the mid-80s, they came out with a 90% efficient gas stove. They had two stainless steel heat exchangers. Well, it only took a few months, and the second heat exchanger, the cooler one actually, rusted up turned into a ball of rust. They had to yank out all those 90% efficient heaters and put 81% efficient ones in. And uh, it was, you know, three, four years later that they finally came out with ones where the second heat exchanger is made of uh, ceramic because it just couldn't handle it. The stainless couldn't handle it. And he agrees, you know, if you're heating your stainless up to 1200 degrees every single day, with a fire, it's just not going to last. It's going to your stainless steel will just burn up at the at 1,200 degrees on a daily basis, which is still only the minimum. So what about the maximum? Well, Ernie Weiser once said that uh, he got 4,500 degrees out of a rocket stove. And somebody else chimed in that the maximum temperature you can burn wood at is 3,600 degrees. Well, I really don't know about either one of those things, but I do know that before you reach 3,000 degrees, you have achieved a lot of very destructive temperatures. For example, fire brick, that will self-destruct at, it's only rated to 2,000 degrees. That's it. And it breaks down. Uh, tungsten, let's say you made your stove out of tungsten. Well, you recognize this, don't you? It's a 100 watt light bulb. Incandescent. Inside here, it's a little wire that's made of tungsten because they know they can make it glow in there uh, white hot, which is probably somewhere around, you know, this area here, 2,500 degrees to 2,000 degrees, somewhere in there. And uh, it won't melt or boil away quite so quickly. Okay, well, the problem with this is there's either no air or a special gas in here to prevent this from burning up. See, if you break, you know, if you break this glass without breaking the wire and then you turn the power on, the tungsten will just burn up instantly. That's not going to work for your stove. So what happens when, you're, when you've got steel exposed to these kind of temperatures on a continuous basis is your steel smolders. Okay, when steel burns, it doesn't produce enough heat to sustain itself under normal conditions. So it doesn't happen right away, but it happens faster and faster as you get warmer. So that's my reasoning that steel is not a good idea for these stoves except as maybe a demonstration package or a pocket rocket that never actually achieves these temperatures. Then, then it would be okay. Um, but if you want your stove to last a while you need to make it out of masonry and even remember that even your fire brick will ev eventually end up burning up and shrinking and going away. So make it replaceable and uh, stay away from the steel.